I'm like, what am I even saying? <laughs> like, what are these words coming out of my mouth? It's all true. <laughs> my name is Anna and I run Anatomy Studio, which is a shibari or rope bondage studio in London. And I'm a shibari teacher. Uh, I would say that the best way to learn is to definitely get yourself some in-person tuition or get yourself to a workshop or some kind of peer learning experience. I think learning hands-on is definitely the best way to do it. Um, I think everyone's experience of pregnancy is quite unique, so I can't speak for everybody, but like for me personally, I felt my relationship to my body changed so much and I felt so different um, that, for example, I didn't really feel like anything too, too hard or too intense. I felt quite, quite fragile and quite sensitive. So I did a lot of self-tying. Um, I've done a bunch of self-tying before but during pregnancy. That was my go-to um, rope experience was tying myself or asking my partner to do some quite uh, gentle, um, sort of, you know, caressing type of, type of rope. Um, so yeah, that I would say that, that was the main thing that um, changed for me during pregnancy. It's just I became a lot softer in my, in my desires. I really like how tactile shibari is. I love being touched. I've always really liked massages and touching. So shibari for me is really about that, about being really close to someone physically and also being able to do all that stuff without the promise of sex. I'm actually quite like shy sexually. So for me, uh, shibari is kind of an opportunity for like extended foreplay. Yeah, it just feels like a really long drawn out foreplay session that doesn't lead to sex most of the time. And I just really like that. It is, it is what it is and it's a complete experience and it doesn't need any, anything else. Um, and all the touching, I really like touching. <laughs> Well, we keep it quite separately, so we have a very um, private personal life that includes like the parenting and the baby. Uh, and then public life is the rope life. So we, we pretty much, we're pretty clear on, on, our, on our boundaries. So home is very vanilla family um, life. And then anything that's kink related or rope is uh, done outside, uh, especially in the studio. So if we want to play, we just go to the studio and at home we have our, our family life. I don't really know where I'll be in five to 10 years time when I feel like those conversations might arise. I didn't really plan on becoming a shibari teacher or like basically making a living in the kink world <laughs> so i really don't know where i'll be in five to ten years time so we'll see i had a really open upbringing my parents were always really uh, open and liberal and everything was up for uh, for discussion and any question i asked they they would answer it so i feel like um we're probably going to do the same with 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 our children as well So a rigger is someone who does the tying. You can be an amazing rigger and not necessarily an amazing teacher or not want to teach. A shibari teacher is really kind of a separate skill. I think teaching is a separate skill. And also you don't really need to be a rigger in order to be a shibari teacher because there's a lot of topics that you can teach within the umbrella of shibari. So for example, there are also people who teach rope bottoming. So in that case, you would be a rope bottom who would teach other people about rope bottoming. It doesn't. <laughs> it is my life. I don't know how to answer that one, sorry. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's get that. I don't know. I'm really good at tying my shoelaces. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please use that. <laughs> Comes in handy at Christmas as well, like packaging things. 
Oh, I definitely prefer uh, being tied. Um, I'm definitely 90% of the time I am being tied and that's what I like. I'm, I'm very much a rope bottom who also ties. The rigging is definitely secondary to uh, my rope bottoming. Um, but I, I really like tying. I really like tying as well. <laughs> So in order to be a good rope bottom, I would say you have to enjoy it and also being good at communicating. So being able to actually communicate with your partner about things that you like, don't like, things that hurt, things that don't hurt and also having some self-awareness. So whether it's self-awareness of your body, but also self-awareness of your mental states and things like that, because those things are important when you do rope. Um, so yeah, other than that, that's pretty much it really.